So let's talk about the AWS Parameter Store. And so to me, this is one of the most revolutionary service. It's underutilized by people, and you should know about it because the exam starts asking questions. So it's a way to securely store your configuration and your secrets. Think as what the name indicates, it's a parameter store. You have the option to use something called seamless encryption. And so you can use KMS to basically encrypt any configuration you put in the parameter store. As such, Parameter Store is a really good way to put database passwords somewhere. It's serverless, so you don't have to manage any servers. It's scalable, you can have tens of thousands of parameters. It's durable, you don't need to worry about the parameters going away. It's free, and there's a really easy SDK to use it, as we'll see in the hands-on lecture. On top of things, you're able to do version tracking of configurations and secrets. So if you erase a secret, a database password from a new one to an old one, you're still able to access, for example, the old database secret, which is really good. You can get all the configuration through IAM and all the secrets are on their path. I'll show you what that means in the next slide. But so that means that using IAM, you can restrict who can view which database passwords. And on top of it, because there is KMS integration, you also need to define KMS policies to allow someone to decrypt a secret. You can get notified of anything happening, for example, secrets changing or parameters changing using the CloudWatch events. And finally, there is an integration with CloudFormation, just in case you would need to have parameter store feed into a CloudFormation template. So here's what it looks like visually. Here's your application, and it could be whatever you want. It could be EC2, it could be Lambda, it could be your, com your computer, it could be the CLI. And so it wants to interact with the parameter store. So it wants to retrieve parameters. So what we can do is that we can just use the SDK and say, hey, parameter store, I'd like to get a plain text configuration. Now, what happens is that the parameter store will go and check with IAM that I have the right to access that parameter and that configuration. And so if it's plain text, just fine, it will just send it back. But the second use case is to use encrypted configuration. So likewise, we'll ask parameter store, hey, we want this encrypted configuration. It will check the IAM permissions that we have, and then if they're okay, it will also call the decryption service on KMS side. So KMS will be used to decrypt it and parameter store, if everything is fine, will send us back the configuration. And so that's pretty good because we don't need to directly interact with KMS to retrieve some encrypted data. We just interact with SSM and the decryption happens seamlessly for us. So it simplifies a little bit the workflow versus KMS. In terms of hierarchy, here's what the parameters look like. So for example, and you're free to name it however you want. For example, you have my department, and in my department, you have my app, you have the dev environment, and under dev, you have the database URL and the database password. We may have a prod environment under which you have a database URL and database password, so the same hierarchy. But we can have other apps under my department, and we can have other departments. So think of like a giant tree and you can organize that tree however you want. Some people have it department-centric, some people have it app-centric, some people have it environment-centric. All that matters is that you define some kind of hierarchy and convention by how you define your parameters. So why do we do this? Well, say we have a dev lambda function and we're going to get dev parameters, then we would just use the get parameters or get parameters by path API. So just remember these two APIs. And we would ask directly for the dev parameters. But if we had a product lambda function, it would automatically ask for the prod parameters. And so here we can see we can differentiate different parameters for different environments, which is good because we have clear separation of duties and roles and et cetera, et cetera. So this is how easy that is, to be honest. You just need to remember that the stores are a hierarchy, that you get encrypted and plain text parameters, and that you have get parameters by path or get parameters. That's it. We're just going to practice this in the next lecture just so you get a much better idea of how it works because this is one of these services that you need to see how it works to get a better idea of how things go. But you'll see it's very easy and I find it incredibly useful. So see you in the next lecture.